Okay, I will go uh, quickly to the oil palm sentinel landscape based a bit on the guidelines that Anja provided us. Well, the, the whole idea with this uh, sentinel landscape, which is another of the thematic sentinel landscapes, which is a bit uh, uh, not quite, uh, it doesn't necessarily adjust to the concept of sentinel landscape. So uh, in our perspective, this is more of a network of oil palm sentinel landscapes or landscape where oil palm is the main dominant economic activity that is shaping the, the land use trajectories of this landscape. So I think that's, that's a bit the, the way in which we, we have been trying to understand and also the way in which these different landscapes, they relate to uh, global value chains and how is that these global value chains are, are putting pressures or opportunities to uh, land use dynamics in the landscapes. You know? So, uh, so it, it, we were exploring to what extent this was possible, but I think it's important to say that uh, at the beginning very much of, the, of this idea was to try to embed our process of data collection and analysis within the other sentinel landscapes. However, we have faced different difficulties in the sense that the different sentinel landscapes, they have defined the boundaries of the landscapes with different, in different ways. Uh, the timing of starting the work in the different landscapes has been different. So we decided that uh, we were going to initiate our activities of uh, setting up our work, defining our boundaries, and then uh, try to relate with the activities of the other sentinel landscapes. I think we have been able to, to do that in some of the sentinel landscapes, mainly in, in Borneo, Peru, uh, a bit in Cameroon. But also what happens is that we have to expand our network of, of landscapes that we were looking at, because not all the sentinel landscapes they are looking at oil palm. So, uh, the main justifications to, to start this work and how is that this idea was a, a bit accepted by the whole group and starting this, this activity was that oil palm is one of the major uh, drivers of uh, land use change and, and in the tropics. So it was good to have a more uh, closer understanding of, of, of these dynamics and their impacts across different uh, uh, socioeconomic and institutional and, and, and context. No? Uh, and our main focus in, is on assessing the, the expansion of these dynamics. No? Uh, so we have been focusing in six landscapes where there's an important expansion of, of oil palm. And uh, one important perspective that we want to contribute to the whole discussion of oil palm because I think every week there's a new report coming up on oil palm with opinions about what are the impacts, implications, and what should be done in order to regulate expansion. So we wanted to, to give more empirical data or provide more empirical data to this discussion and to bring a more, much more nuanced perspective about what the expansion of oil pound may mean in different contexts where we have different political economies, different histories of land occupation, different market opportunities, and different biophysical conditions. So it's much more nuanced perspective about the trajectories of oil palm when oil palm moves from Southeast Asia to another context. So, uh, and as you see, well, but mainly main oil palm expansion is concentrated well in Malaysia, they moved to Indonesia, big expansion in Indonesia, but also investments were flying to, to Africa, Central Africa, West Africa, and a bit of expansion in Latin America. So I think that brings more opportunities to start thinking about what the, the, the expansion of uh, global value change of oil palm may mean in the different context. And, uh, but still the, the consumption is concentrated in very few countries, not India, China. Domestic uh, uh, markets are quite important, not only for Indonesia, but also in the, in the other countries in, in Africa, in Latin America, very much in Latin America, the expansion is dominated by domestic markets. And what also you can see is that uh, the dynamics you know, uh, of prices, international prices of oil palm, that they really have pushed the expansion of this crop, but also there is this decline in the last year. So we don't know exactly what this decline is going to mean in terms of how companies are going to manage their investment strategies, their stocks, etc. So I think it's, a, it's still an interesting timing to keep understanding about what are the implications of oil palm. So we selected seven landscapes. This has been a bit an opportunistic selection of landscapes, a bit based on what the other groups were doing, and as I said, trying to build on, on that work. So we choose a the Sumatra, Borneo, so we are working in East Kalimantan. We are look, uh, linking with uh, West Kalimantan, the sentinel landscape that, that Ips is coordinating. And also uh, Cameroon, you know, in Central Africa. And we did some work in Nigeria as well, you know, because Nigeria is an important country for 
expansion on oil palm, and we started to explore dynamics of oil palm expansion in some countries in Latin America. So very much we focus on, on Peru, in the Peruvian Amazon, then uh, Colombia. Colombia is an important country in Latin America because there's much more development of plantations of oil palm in that country. And also we started to look at Brazil because there were big uh, uh, plans for expanding oil palm in the northeast part of Brazil. So the government was talking about expanding two million hectares of Brazil. So we started to look at that. But however, uh, we have been doing, and I will talk a little bit this afternoon about this, uh, more uh, data collection in uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, well, I forgot to mention Malaysia, Cameroon, Peru, and Colombia. So uh, we have not been quite active in Nigeria. And in Brazil, we are still struggling in the sense of building a formal process of uh, institutional linkages with, with Embrapa in order to conduct this work. But that's, that's moving forward. Uh, the questions that, that we are trying to address with this work are very much uh, four. No? What's the role of oil palm in shaping local and national models of economic uh, development and the impact over time? And also, what is the role of policies and corporate strategies in shaping this, these developments? Another question that uh, is very much phrasing also our work of data collection is what are the implications of different business models? So we, we have seen uh, from Malaysia, Indonesia, and then expanding to Africa and Latin America that there are like four or five main different uh, business models that are shaping this development. So understanding these business models and the impact is quite important from a policy perspective. And then we are also a bit exploring what are the different policy responses that countries, corporate actors, are putting in place in order to uh, influence the, or to reduce the negative impacts of these expansions, and how to move more towards more inclusive uh, business models. So the outcomes, or how do I see what, what the outcomes are of this work? Uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, opportunities to fit into national strategies uh, for uh, developing sustainable oil palm in the different countries in which we are working. Of course, there are more opportunities in some countries than, than, than in others. But I think there's a very intense debate in all these countries and, uh, and governments are putting in place multi or promoting multi-stakeholder platforms for starting this discussion on sustainable and inclusive uh, business models for oil palm. Uh, also, where I see the opportunities are in this uh, providing information and knowledge to the learning networks. So there are learning ne networks that are expanding in the countries, and I think we, we, we are trying to feed into those. No, uh, very much from this perspective of understanding implications in different contexts from different business models. And uh, another perspective that, that we are exploring is how to uh, interact with very specific private and public uh, initiatives in order to uh, regulate oil palm expansion in a specific context. And that's the case of uh, East Kalimantan, for example, where we are developing much more efforts to, to link with specific activities uh, or initiatives at this some national level. Uh, in the way in which I understand the oil palm sent in the landscape, and as we were saying, it's more a network of oil palm sent in the landscape, it's more a platform for collaboration. So uh, we have uh, started to build links with uh, CCAFs, mainly with Flagship 3, which focuses on mitigation. And uh, in order to understand uh, what sort of institutional arrangement should be in place to govern the expansion of, of oil palm or to improve the impacts of oil palm. And we are focusing this work at the subnational level in Kalimantan in Indonesia. Also, we are looking to some other initiatives like the CSL Sustainable Oil Palm Platform, which is more focused on disseminated information that is available on, on oil palm. Uh, and then uh, we have developing also efforts to, to link to uh, a bit to the global level through RSPO and to feed into the discussions of RSPO about uh, inclusive business models. And then also looking at the linking to national processes. So uh, in some of the key countries in which we are doing our work, we are linking either with governments or associations of oil palm growers to inform these processes of debate about options for sustainable oil palm. Uh, our team has been quite active in Cameroon in developing this uh, 
national strategy for sustainable oil palm development with the Ministry of Agriculture. So that strategy is, uh, there's already a document that's on debate. Also, we are linking with this working group on the Indonesian Sustainable Palm Oil Platform that has just started uh, two months ago in Indonesia. And also, we are linking with uh, the Fede Palma, which is the Federation of Oil Palm Growers in Colombia, with Sandy Palma, which is the Institute for Research on Oil Palm, in order to uh, look at what are uh, improved options for alliances between companies and smallholders. So we are trying to uh, do work across these uh, different levels and also to promote also some uh, sharing of, of, of lessons. And finally, the efforts, uh, or how do we see the, uh, in the, that this uh, work could expand to the future and, uh, and in order to bring <coughs> complementary resources, uh, we have got a proposal accepted by the Swiss National Science Foundation that we developed with ETH, uh, WWF International, and offices in Colombia, Indonesia, and uh, Cameroon, and some national partners to start looking at uh, scenarios for future of oil palm development in the countries in which we think uh, that there are more possibilities to engage with national institutions, which are Indonesia, Cameroon, and Colombia. So we are going to start this project next year for the next six years. And then we uh, started to link more actively with the group or with the team working on markets in, in aircraft and biodiversity. Uh, and we come up with one of these ideas for future funding and, and, and under the Sentinel uh, landscape initiative, which is uh, looking at the impacts from global market forces and interventions that support sustainable business landscapes and, and livelihoods. And in addition, we have several other uh, small projects supporting this our agenda on, on looking at, at oil palm uh, development and their implications. I think this has been a way, as I was saying, to bring together the teams working on oil palm to come up with a network and platforms. But that's, that's not, this work does not necessarily include all the work that the centers, uh, members of FTA, have been doing on oil palm. I think there's much more that has been done. And there's uh, also much more need to integrate that work that has been done uh, outside of this uh, Small initiative, I would say. Thank you.